This pet coke is a direct byproduct of tar sands refinement. The Marathon refinery brings in this sweet crude from Alberta, which is ironic because it's not sweet at all when this refinery is causing the surrounding communities to be the third most polluted zip code in the country. This is environmental racism. This is environmental justice. This is our calling and when we stand up and we work with the community that's been working at this for so long and we realize that we are all in this together. So we challenged the tar sands, we worked with this community and then in this pet coke, it, it's the most horrifyingly beautiful thing where Marathon sells this petroleum coke, which is a, a, a cheap version of dirty fuel. They sell it to none other than the Koch brothers who then sell it on the open market globally in Monroe at the tar sands. Um, they use it as a form of energy. It's like coal, but although it's also filled with cancer-causing products like mercury, selenium, chromium, nickel, all these horrible things, it's also, as far as coal is concerned, it's 56.3% more carbon intensive than coal. So not only are we polluting the rivers as this four-story high, non-permitted, non-covered waste is on the shores of the Detroit River, spilling into the rivers, as the MDEQ calls fugitive dust, which is blowing into people's houses, on the streets, in the windows, people are having respiratory issues. It's all these things connected, right? So we looked and we said, we must challenge this. And we worked legislatively. A, a gentleman in the organization named Stephen Boyle has been putting tireless efforts, attending every city council meeting, holding the representatives accountable, holding the corporations accountable. And we were able to have a small victory where we closed one of the two export facilities here at the Detroit River. And we closed the one, but there's still another one blowing into the Detroit River, going into houses. There's a halfway house across the street where folks can't leave there, but yet it's still going in. So we the people, Community grounded, we planned four days of action a couple weeks ago with a rally, a people's press conference, a march from southwest Detroit all the way to the Pet Coke Piles, which ironically ends at Rosa Parks. Where Rosa Parks ends is where this Pet Coke Pile is. And it's the idea that the morning on Monday morning when the Pet Coke trucks came with their dump, dump trucks full of Pet Coke, that we had planned that a number of folks, Detroit Coalition Against Taurus and other folks came and we linked arms and we stood in front of these dump trucks and said that you shall not move the people until you move pet coke. It's the idea, the grounding on this action was the idea that we are each called to find our individual power, that it's our responsibility, our moral, moral obligation to not only stand up for future generations, but also for all those peoples across the world who had the least to do with the challenges we face, face today, but who are bearing the greatest brunt and who will bear the greatest brunt as far as climate change and the catastrophic climate change. So we stood in front of this pet coke truck as a semi is inching closer and closer. And although there were six, seven of us at the start, then there were nine, then we had a whole community surrounding us where we all stood together as one united voice, that we the people as we affirm our collective voice and power that we can peacefully resist, that we can rise together, my friends. And we did. For four hours, as police came, as Border Patrol came and told us you need to move, we said, move the pet coke, not the people. And as they gave us more demands that you need to move, we said again that this is about our democracy. This is about our right to clean air and clean water. And that we, the people, it is our moral obligation to stand strong and say that this is more than just pet coke. That this is the fight for our future, my friends. And we stood our ground and beautifully, <laughs> our demands were turn the pet coke trucks around, bring it back to Marathon. And after four hours holding that ground, the pet coke trucks turned around with no arrests and went back to Marathon where they came. stood strong and the following day the same thing and they turned back around it was not just this story this is a story I know there are hundreds of stories in this audience of the same exact thing we find and affirm our power we find our voice our individual and collective voice and we come together and when we come together we recognize that with great power as the saying goes with great power comes great responsibility
But we are all called to do great things, but not everyone is going to block a truck. Not everyone's going to be an organizer, but we all have to look inside our heart and our soul and say, what are we called to do? I say we are called as the temperature, as we heard earlier, rises and the, the tides rise, that we, the people, must also rise. That as the oceans become more acidic and as we face all this devastation, that we, the people, must rise collectively, peacefully. That when we have a threat to the world's greatest source of fresh water, that we, the people, must rise. All of you today are here because we are rising as a unified movement. The fossil fuel resistance is rising on college campuses, in faith-based communities. As one people, as one planet, we, the people, will rise. We will rise together. We will rise. We will rise. Power of the people.